Welcome students to the live overview of putting it all together for our chapter four content. So far in chapter four, we've been focusing on debits and credits, the system of making sure our accounts are balanced in a second dimension overall. But today we're gonna see how the work that we've been doing with analyzing our transactions with debits and credits lines up with our thinking about transactions. Turn off your volume, please applies to the ledger in more organized ways, and then can be checked for balance in our final trial balance sheets. We're gonna see this whole process unravel step by step from start to end. So as always, we begin with a balance sheet. So in a future chapter, we'll actually be adding a couple other steps to things in between and at the end of things. But in this chapter, here's the steps that are going to be required of you to show your full understanding of this content. The first thing is to be able to think about all of the accounts on our balance sheet and where we need to represent them in other parts of our documentation. So let's take a quick kind of peek ahead at what sections we have to fill out. Below our balance sheet, we have our transaction analysis sheet, which requires us, you'll see that I labeled them A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, rather than with numbers, just to kind of show something today to help us be a little bit more organized in a minute. I see below that I also have these transactions listed out and described. But on the side here, we have our ledger, where we are going to actually be documenting the debits and credits for each of our accounts. I think that I've already given you the labels of the accounts here, but technically, in a question, you might be required to create and label the ledger on your own, which you'll actually see in problem number two. I've left an empty ledger for you to practice setting up yourself, just so you kind of know ahead of time. But on this first problem, we're working together. I've already set this stuff up for us. However, we're also gonna have a section for our accounts being updated in our trial balance. And this is something that we could just update when we get there eventually, or you could fill in right from the start. The order isn't super important. I'm gonna save it for now so we can dive in from the beginning. Our balance sheet is mainly used to extract information from and update things in their initial state. One place that we need to do this is in our ledger where we have to update our initial balance for each account. My cash account, for example, has a $5,000 initial balance at the start of this financial period. So what I need to do is head over to my cash account in my ledger and put that $5,000 value in the correct spot. Cash is an asset account, meaning its balance is held on the debit side. Meaning I put this $5,000 figure on the left hand or debit column. I sometimes like to bold it as well because it's the initial balance just to kind of show that it's the initial one. That's something I like to do to be organized. And next, I'm going to just go down my list and take my balance sheet information and place all the initial balances into my ledger one at a time. The next one I have is this accounts receivable called David L. I already have it labeled over here. I have a $2,400 balance, so I can just type it in over in the debit side because it's an asset. However, I want to show you one little trick that you can use if you want to ensure that you don't make careless transcription mistakes. And by a transcription mistake, I mean that you accidentally typo a, a number by just being a bit sloppy. I could type in 2400 and hit enter, but something else I can do is actually press my equals key. See how equals shows up in the slot here? Let me uh, zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. If I press equals, one thing I can do is I can just click on a, another cell and hit enter. And now this cell has the same value as the cell I connected it to. So the numbers just connect from one cell to the other. There's no way I can make an error doing that. I just make one equal to the other. I like to do that out of habit just to remove any chance of typos. I know I've seen a number of students in the class on assessments make a little typo just by, it just happens, sloppiness happens in the moment, and it sucks to lose a score, a point on your uh, test or assignment doing so. So I'm gonna do this for all my accounts. My accounts receivable, Kathy Z, is $750, but I can just go equals, and then choose the Kathy Z account and hit enter, and that 750 gets applied to it. 
I'm going to zoom out so we can see kind of things a little bit easier, maybe make it a bit easier to see my numbers by adjusting the column width. And I'm going to just assign each of these values. My supply starts to be equal to the supply slot. Hit Enter. My inventory begins equal to my inventory account balance. And my office is equal to, of course, the office balance. Hit Enter. Getting cut off a little bit. I'll make it a bit wider. So what I've simply done for now is take the information from my balance sheet and transfer it into the opening balance on my ledger. Hopefully, we notice a pattern at this point in time, which is all of the accounts so far have had their initial balance lift listed on the left-hand side. We call it the debit side. This is because asset accounts, which is all that we've dealt with so far, hold debit balances. I can now also do the same thing for my credit accounts. Try to beat me to it if you can do so. Do it so right now in class or pause the video. Try to beat me to it if you're watching this later. So I need to think about my credit card debt. It's tempting to just put it on the same side, but I have to remember that liabilities hold their opening balance on the credit side. So I'm going to set the right or credit side to be equal to my credit card balance. Makes it a bit wider to fit in. And my bank loan will be equal to the loan value. My mortgage will be equal to the mortgage value. And my equity, don't make a mistake here and click on the, the total liabilities. My equity is down here by Cindy G, who is the owner of this business. And my equity, owner's equity account, holds that initial credit balance because it is an equity account which hold credit balances, of course. So what I've been able to do fairly efficiently is set up the initial state of each of my T-chart accounts using information from my balance sheet which I need to do to be ready to process changes to come. I'm soon going to be adding other numbers to some of these T accounts to update their values based off of transactions, which I have listed down below here. We'll get to that in a sec. One quick question I'll address in advance is, Mr. Owl, how do we know how big to make our T accounts? For these questions, I've set them up in the right size to fit the information, but sometimes you won't know in advance, and you'll have to just edit and adjust your documentation as you go. Okay? Sometimes accounts might have lots of transactions. These ones are set up to have enough room already. But for now, we'll leave those accounts set up, and uh, we'll pause to take any questions. All right, let's move on to the more complicated step, we have to keep track of a few things at the same time. Don't worry. We're ready to do this. We've learned all these things individually. We're just putting it all together and seeing how these things work alongside one another at this point in time. We now need to process our transactions. Our whole goal with our accounting work right now is to think about the business at the start of a financial period and then keep track of changes in its accounts as time goes by and then be able to represent where things end up at the end of a financial period. In this financial period, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven transactions that occur. Other questions might have more or less questions. This one has seven. And we need to figure out how these transactions impact accounts based off of our debit and credit way of thinking. So let's work through these one at a time together in this kind of overview. You'll be doing lots on your own afterwards separately. So let's work through this A to begin with. The owner withdraws $3,000 for personal use. So the first thing we need to do is represent the two or more accounts that are affected. In this practice set of problems, I've already sh given you the exact number of accounts needed. So you'll see a couple questions have three accounts, a big hint that we'll need three things. But on actual assessments, I'm not going to make that as clear. You're going to have to determine that yourself. In fact, I will put three entries. I'll give you three options for every transaction. Sometimes you'll only use two of the three. Sometimes you'll use all three. Because I don't want to give away too much information in how I organize things for you, just to warn you. So in A, we have two accounts affected, the owner's account and $3,000, which is going to be from our cash account. So I have my cash account being affected. And my owner's account, which is called Cindy G, who's the owner. Let's zoom in a little bit here just to make it a little easier to see stuff. 
and uh, let's not zoom past too much here. And it's important for us to document, at least for now, our account classification. In future chapters, we'll actually be getting rid of this documentation altogether, this transaction analysis sheet. Because at that point, we're hoping for this to be able to be solved a little bit more just in our own heads. It's kind of like showing our work along the way. But at some point, when we're good enough at this stuff, we don't have to show our work quite so much. But for now, I want to see you work through this step by step. Cash is an asset account. And Cindy G is an owner's equity account. These are important to make note of because they help influence us determining whether things are debited or credited based on the rules that we've been learning. So let's review the transaction. The owner withdraws $3,000 for personal use. So we have to think through and solve this problem. If the owner is withdrawing money from the business, is cash increasing or decreasing? In this case, the business now has less cash in the business. It's been removed, which means our cash is decreasing. However, because the owner has removed money from the business, they also have less right to the business's value, which means that their equity has also decreased. So both accounts are decreasing in this context. Now, based on the patterns that we've learned, we can assess whether things are debited or credited. If an asset decreases, that means it is credited. If an owner's equity decreases, it's debited. Credit and debit. One thing that we need to use as a way of kind of checking in with our work as we go is that for every transaction, credits and debits need to be in balance. We should never have a situation where one transaction only has debits or only has credits. That shouldn't happen. That means things are out of balance. So seeing one of each is a great sign. What's the amount? Well, it's by $3,000 in each. Remember, for amounts, we don't write any negative numbers. Everything is a positive number. It's just in a credit or a debit account. So here is our first full line of information, our first transaction. The owner removes $3,000. Their equity goes down from the business. So the amount of cash they hold also goes down. Crediting for an asset, debiting for an equity account. Make sure you have a clear understanding of that and ask if you need any clarifications. So far, we've kind of done what we've been doing in our textbook work. But now we're going to add an extra step here that connects us to kind of section 4.3, 4.4 type content. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and take a peek over at my ledger over on the side here. Because every transaction requires us to update our ledger with its information. Let me show you how this is done. My cash account has now been credited $3,000. Which means, in my cash account, I need to head to the credit side, which is the right-hand side. And I need to put in 3000 Oh, make it a bit wider here. To show that I've been credited $3,000. Let's pause for a sec and make sure this makes clear sense to us. My business has $3,000 less dollars now. I had $5,000, but now I have $3,000 credited. What's the difference between these two? $2,000. This is currently the balance remaining in that account, which should make sense. We had $5,000. We lost $3,000. We have $2,000 left. We don't need to actually total up the overall balance of an account to the end, though. So I'm going to leave this out of there for now. But just to show you that things are making sense. The credit and debit system is actually working out this, the totals of accounts for us really straight in a straightforward way. So our cash account now has its values updated. But I also have to worry about this owner's equity account that's being debited 3000 So I head down to my owner's equity. Debit means the left-hand side for $3,000. Make that column a little wider for the, for the screen here. So now, technically, this is decreasing the amount of equity the owner has based off of the way that we eventually balance out debits and credits. 
but I'm writing those values in my ledger under the T account that's relevant for that transaction. The last thing that I want to do as a final piece of organization, I'm eventually going to have lots of numbers written on these T accounts, which can be a little bit difficult to keep track of and determine which thing is applying to what transaction. So one thing we normally do is think about the transaction number or letter. In this case, it's transaction A. And we actually make a little note beside the transaction that this was A. And I'm going to use spacebar to put this over to the right-hand side here, and that this one was A as well. So I can see at a glance that this transaction was transaction A, and this transaction was transaction A. I'm just going to label that letter beside the entry so that there's a reference, so that just in case I go back and check my work later or I recognize an error, I'm able to go and track it down and fix it without having to kind of refigure out where everything is. It's just a small, simple label, but that can really help us in the long run. Technically, after going through that example, we kind of know enough to do all the rest of them. And I encourage you, if you're doing this live alongside me or on the video, that you try to beat me to these transactions. I'm going to explain each one of them just to be thorough today, but see if you can't beat me to the punch to check your understanding in advance. Of course, if you're feeling stuck, no problem. Let's look at transaction B. David L. Who's David L? Let's go take a look. David L. An accounts receivable. An asset. Okay, good to know, to remember. Pays off the remaining balance owed. The money is used to pay off part of the company's bank loan. Okay, we have a bank loan up here that's being influenced. So the accounts being affected are this accounts receivable, David L., as well as the bank loan account that's being paid off. So I've been able to extract that information just by reading the transaction carefully and documenting it as I go. It says David L. pays off their remaining balance owed. There's no number given here. We have to be able to interpret this and go, oh, that means that they owed us $2,400. If they pay off the balance owed, that means that that's the whole value. So, okay, let's see how this all plays out here. David L. is an accounts receivable or an asset account. Our bank loan up here is a liability as it's listed in our balance sheet, a liability account. David L's account, the receivable account, because it gets paid off, the account is decreasing. Make sure that's clear in your minds. It's, they're paying us money, which seems like a positive thing and it is, but that particular account, how much they owe us is going down. It's actually going down to zero because they're paying us all the money that they owe. Where is the value for our business? The value is in the fact that our bank loan liability is also decreasing. Them paying us back is making our loan smaller. A negative or decreasing asset is a credit. A negative or decreasing liability is a debit based off of the rules that we've learned in this section. <clears throat> How much was the value for the total amount of the balance owed or $2,400 for both accounts? Take note, the amount of credits and debits is equivalent in the first problem and in the second problem. 3,000 credits, 3,000 debits, 2,400 credits, 2,400 debits. Balance is being maintained every single transaction. If that is ever not in balance, it means that you have done something incorrect. Or maybe your teacher made a typo, but most likely it's you made an error in your calculations or judgment. Now, and see if you can beat me to this, let's update our ledger to reflect what we've been able to figure out about this transaction. So I need to track down my accounts receivable, David L account, and my bank loan accounts. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit here. And head, here's my accounts receivable, David L. This account is being credited $2,400. Credits are the right-hand side. So I put this value in on the right. My bank loan liability account, double check, it's the bank loan, is listed over here. This account, however, is debited $2,400. 
So I'm going to put that number on the left or the debit side of that account. Make sure that you clearly understand why this account is credited and this account is debited. It's an essential baseline thing you need to understand for this unit. And please ask if you have any questions about that. The final step is I need to label this so that I can keep track of the transaction. This is transaction B. And it's side by side, which is kind of convenient. I'm just going to write B beside each of those entries to just make it really clear that this is entry for transaction B in my receivable account. And this is the entry for transaction B in my bank loan account. Maybe I'll space that back once to look a little bit nicer. So now that second transaction is updated in our ledger and documented clearly in an organized manner. All right, seek clarification if you need it. Let's dive into C together. Transaction C, the business purchases $1,500 in supplies using cash. If you can, try to beat me to it. Pause the video if you're watching it or do so right now in class if you can beat me to it. There are two accounts affected, cash and supplies. Cash and supplies. Cash is an asset. Supplies is also an asset. Am I allowed to have two of the same type of account affected in a transaction? Absolutely. That's not a problem. Okay, let's see how it's affected. Which is increasing? Which is decreasing? Are they both doing the same or whatnot? Here's a quick tip for you. If the same type of account is being influenced, one must go up and one must go down. The opposite must happen to maintain balance. So which is which? We get $1,500 in supplies using cash. So we're paying money to get more supplies, meaning we have less money and more supplies, negative and positive. A decreasing asset account is credited. An increasing asset account is debited. So here we go. We see credit and debit paired up again. For how much? $1,500 from our transaction down below. The same amount. 1500 for the credits, 1500 for the debits. They're in balance. Our fundamental balance is maintained still, as it always should be. And let's head over and update our ledger. So I need to find my cash account up here. And I see that my cash is being credited $1,500, which means 1500 goes on the right-hand side. My supplies is being debited by $1,500. So my supplies is increasing in value by 1500 on the debit side. I'll enter that value. Final thing I need to do is just document by placing a little label. I like to have it colored in a different color just to be really clear that these two values in the ledger are related to transaction C to be organized. Wonderful. All right, we're picking up some speed here because we're getting the hang of what is going on. Let's move on to the next transaction. Transaction D. The business sells $2,200 of inventory for cash. So again, I have cash being affected and my inventory being affected as well. And these are both assets once again. What's happening to them? In this case, I'm selling inventory. So there's less inventory now, but I'm receiving cash. So there's more cash now, meaning my cash is increasing. My inventory is decreasing. When an asset increases, it's a debit. When it decreases, it's a credit. By how much money? $2,200 for each, oops, $2,200 for each account. So this transaction, what's happening here is I'm converting inventory value into cash value, transferring value from one form to another. I'm basically liquidating inventory making it more of a liquid asset overall to connect some of our previous terms. Now, assuming that we've been paying attention and understand how we're organizing our contents, the next step is just so simple. We just take a look at what we're dealing with. It's an, a cash account is being debited $2,200. Our cash account is being debited $2,200. This is transaction D. Let me just update that right off the bat. And then my inventory account is being credited $2,200. My inventory credited right-hand side, 
$2,200, put D beside it, and there we go. There's our entry for the inventory for transaction D. Here's our entry for the cash account for transaction D. I'll pause for one moment here just to point out that our cash account is getting a little bit busy, which it normally is. Cash tends to be the busiest of our accounts in general, but there's nothing ambiguous about it. I know exactly what's going on. I have three transactions, A, C, and D, have had to do with cash. Two of them caused a credit adjustment. One of them caused a debit adjustment. Eventually, we're going to see how this all balances out. But for now, we're just keeping track and organizing things. We see some different accounts being affected. Wonderful. Let's move on to E, F, and G. E. This one's a little bit more involved. Notice I've left you three slots because this is a triple. Three accounts are going to be impacted. Again, for the practice stuff, I'm going to give you hints like this that there's three accounts. For the actual assessments, I won't be quite so obvious about it. You'll have to determine that yourself. All right, let's figure out what accounts are affected. The business is growing and needs more space. A $10,000 addition is added to their office. Oh, office. I remember that's an account from my balance sheet up here. Office, the first account affected. Let's continue. Half the money is paid for through the owner's personal funds. I've been paying attention. I know exactly what that means. Anytime the owner's personal funds is involved, this is an equity account. In this account, it's called Cindy G, who's my owner. I'm just going to put that as owner's equity right now just to be clear. Maybe I'll even put this as an asset right now just to kind of be up to date right off the bat. I already know how to get this all set up. However, I know there's a third account, which is the other half through an additional mortgage. Okay, so we have this mortgage. We've learned this term throughout the course. This means like a loan for a property. And I see I already have a mortgage account. I already have a bit of that liability and now I'm adding more liability to it. So this is a liability account. This is a rare problem where we see a transaction that affects all three types of accounts. Wonderful. Mr. Owl will love to give this type of question on a quiz to come, just, just to kind of give you a hint in advance here. So let's figure out what goes up and what goes down. We purchase an addition to our office worth $10,000. This means our office is increasing in value. There's more of it now. We have an increased asset. I'm just going to write in 10,000 on the right-hand side just because it's on my mind. Might as well. I know that that's the value it's going up by. Why don't we, just because we're here, fill in this last little se section here. Is it a debit or a credit? If an asset increases, it's a debit. Easy. Now we have to figure out what happens with these other two accounts. And from the problem, I recall that it says, I'm paying for this by splitting it two ways. Half of it, I'm paying for it with owner's equity. And half of it, I'm paying for with an increased mortgage. So what's going on in this situation here? Well, the owner is, is adding their own personal funds into the business. And here's what's maybe the trickiest scenario to think through for many of us still, which is that, the owner is adding in their personal money, which means that they have a right to that money back at another point in time. So their equity in the business goes up. It's an inc increase in owner's equity. At the same time, half of the money raised for this addition to the office is done through increasing our mortgage. We now owe more money. That's a negative on our business's value, but we're looking through the perspective of this account. In terms of this account, our liability is increasing. We owe more money. So that account is increasing. And equity, when it increases, is credited. A liability, when it increases, is credited. Debit, credit, credit. We have a mixture of debits and credits, as we always must have. That's good to see. Do the values balance out? We have one more thing to calculate. We know from the transaction that it says half the money was raised through the owner, half of it through this mortgage. Half of 10,000 is 5,000. 
5,000 in each of the parts that provide those funds. Notice we have 10,000 total credits and 10,000 total debits. Those values are perfectly in balance as they always must be in our accounts. I'm saying the same thing over and over again because that's the way that it goes. That's how this all works. So let's now take this triple scenario and adjust it over into our ledger. Maybe I'll zoom in a tiny bit more here. The first, I have my office account being debited $10,000. Office debit side, $10,000. I'm going to attach my transaction, which right now is transaction E. I'll just put this on the right-hand side so that I have that transaction reference on my ledger for organization purposes. Next, I update my equity account, which I'm crediting $5,000. The credit goes on the right-hand side, 5,000 E for transaction E. And finally, my liability mortgage account up here is being credited $5,000. On the credit side, $5,000 E beside it to reflect an organized form of that transaction. So my office debit update, my mortgage credit update, and my equity credit update are now all reflected in my ledger. Everything is synchronized, everything is up to date, and everything is communicated unambiguously, or in other words, super clearly. There's no room for doubt. Everything can be tracked down very easily by anyone reviewing these documents. That's our goal. All right. These questions kind of get a bit long, don't they? But that's life. And that's accounting. So we have to get used to the process. And the more we practice, the more efficient we're going to get. And the, uh, the quicker we'll be able to get through these problems. Let's see if we can't work through F and G a little bit faster yet, just to see how this goes. Of course, try to beat me to it if you're able to. But let's dive in. F, Kathy Z purchases $400 of company supplies on credit. So my first account is Kathy, or did I say F? It's Z, not F. I misread that. And it's a... Uh, Company supply, so the supplies account is the other one. Kathy Z is a receivable account, and supplies is also another asset. These are both assets. Kathy Z, it says, is purchasing more supplies on credit. There's a trick to this question. We need to make sure that we're thoughtful about things because this term that we learned in this section about on credit means that there's actually another small layer we have to think about here. I'm saying that she purchases supplies on credit, which means that she is actually removing supplies from our company to use personally. And on credit means that she hasn't paid yet, that they owe us more money. So this is actually the right accounts, but let's make sure that we kind of get the values correctly. Kathy Z's accounts payable account is increasing. Kathy owes us more money. Our supply account, because Kathy has purchased those supplies from us, we now no longer have them. Meaning there's, oops, hit two keys by the same time there. Now there's less supplies. So I'm transferring value in supplies to value in money. It's just money I, ha I don't have yet. It's, it's kind of like selling it for cash. I just, I'm waiting for the cash still. So this is the correct setup of the accounts, but it might be a bit of, I don't think we've seen this exact scenario before in a transaction. An asset increasing is debited. An asset decreasing is credited. By how much? Kathy, F Kathy, oh sorry, F, F the transaction, Kathy Z purchased $400. So it's 400, 400. Wonderful. 400 debits, 400 credits. Credits and debits are in balance. Let's update our ledger. Dive in over here. Kathy Z debited 400. This is increasing, 400. This is transaction. I think I said it was F. Yep, so F goes over here. I'll just, oh, that didn't format right. So let's just fix that formatting. F, let's move it over to the right-hand side here. 
And then we have our credit for supplies, which is going to be 400 down. F for supplies. That's the transaction documented, organized over here. And let's wrap this up, at least this part of the question, with our final one. The business performs a service earning $8,000. I know what that means. We get some cash. They use the money to pay off their credit card debt and keep the rest in cash. Okay, so we get some cash, but we're using part of it for this payable credit card debt liability. So my credit card debt. But Mr. Rowell gave me a hint here. There's three accounts affected. So what am I missing in this case? Well, here's a hint for you. Anytime a business is performed, uh, sorry, a service is performed by a business, this means that money is flowing in that's not being exchanged for any other asset. It's just, we're just earning money for doing something, which means that we have our Cindy G owner's equity account being affected as well. We have our cash asset, we have our credit card debt liability, and we have our equity all being affected once again in this transaction. This is definitely the trickiest transaction of the bunch. Let me explain to you my reasoning for how this all works out. We are earning $8,000, which means our cash is going up. We are paying off our credit card debt, meaning our debt is going down. However, our owner's equity, our business has earned money. It has more value inside of it, which means that our equity should be increasing. But now we have to figure out the values of things. An asset increasing is a debit. A liability decreasing is a debit. An equity increasing is a credit. How do we know those? We've memorized the pattern from the unit. That's just something that we need to know how to figure out based off of our different account types. The business earned $8,000. What numbers go into these slots? I really recommend that you try to beat me to this just to really check in on your understanding. In fact, I'm going to pause for a sec with live students to let you do so. I hope you had a chance to pause and test this out yourself. But here's how we have to think this through. Our business earned $8,000. The thing that that directly impacts is our equity because that money just flowed right into the business and it's value to the business in some form. So there's now more equity for the owner. But what forms does that value influence directly in the business is spread between these other two accounts. The transaction said the money is used to pay off their credit card debt. The credit card debt is $2,950, which means that $2,950 is the value applied to the liability. What's left is remaining in cash. I can do this manually, or I could even just do a little trick in Excel. I can say this one is equal to my equity minus the liability difference. $5,050 is the number that cash would be affected by or debited in this case. So these are the three values that are the result of that transaction. Definitely the trickiest question on this sheet, but to get a top score on the assessments later, gonna be able to do these. So let's wrap up this updating the ledger with a quick cash is debited 5,500. So up here, our cash is debited 5,500. This is transaction F. Our credit card debt is debited 2950. So up here, credit card debt 2950. I'll just write in this little reference to F beside it for organization's sake. And finally, our owner's equity is credited $8,000. Credits on the right hand side. This is transaction F. Owner's equity is increasing in this situation here. Wonderful. We've now worked through all seven of our transactions A to G. We've processed them. We've thought through all of their nuances, recorded it carefully to show our work, which I need you to do for the remainder of this unit, by the way. And we've updated our ledger to contain these values. We still have two steps to go, however, to be able to get to our final state of this question. 
the first step remaining is to find the balance of our ledger accounts. If we take a look at our cash account, we have a bunch of different values, three debit, debit values and two credit values that we need to figure out how they balance out into one final result. Is this account holding a debit or a credit balance at the end of the day? There's a few ways we can do this. You could do it in your head, you could use a calculator, or you can just use Excel to get these totals done for us, which I'm going to do on the screen right now. I want to total up all my debits. I'm going to press equals, this plus this plus this. Hit enter. This is my total debits. I also want to see my total credits. That equals my first plus my second credit. My total debits on the left, my total credits on the right. My final balance is going to be held on whatever side has the larger number. And it's the difference between my values. The debit side is clearly larger, but by how much? Well, I can just say this equals my larger number subtracted by the smaller number, $8,200. And sometimes I represent this with a little colorization, just so it pops out. This is the final balance of my cash account. I can keep my work being shown here. I don't mind if you delete your work in this step if you did it in your head. It's, it's an optional step. But what I want to see is this is the final total of my cash account. When all my debits and credits are considered, here's that final balance. Okay? Next account, this receivables account. I have 2,400 debit, 2,400 credit. Ha! Huh. It's the same number. That means this account balances out to be zero. I typoed. Let's fix this. 5,050. No problem. So 7,750 is the right balance. Check out. I thought you all did. Good. Nice. Check your work as you go, Mr. L. Good catch. Back to our accounts receivable. Why did I put the zero on the left-hand side. Assets hold a debit balance. So even if it's zero, technically we need to represent that zero on the left-hand side. I'm just going to highlight it green so that it really pops out as that. That account is now technically empty. But I want to update the ledger to be really clearly communicating that. Kathy Z, 750, 400. Well, that's just 750 plus 400. 1,150. It's the total of the two debits in the account. That's the foot or final value of that account. My supplies is equal to, here's another way. There's lots of ways we can total these things up. You decide a way that makes the most sense to you. Here's another way I can do this. It's this debit plus this debit minus this credit. 2,250 is the final balance here. My inventory is 4,000 minus the 2,200, $1,800. My office is 20,000 plus 10,000 or 30,000. We'll see at a gl quick glance here that all of our asset accounts still hold a debit balance as it pretty much always will. Every so often, we might see an asset hold a credit balance. It's possible, but remember, those are called exceptional balances. That means there's something atypical going on. So generally speaking, if you glance down your asset accounts, you should see them all as debited. If not, it's, there's a chance you made a mistake, or maybe it's exceptional. Something to be mindful of, though. All right, let's foot or set the final balance of our liability and equity accounts. These ones hold a balance on the credit side, ideally. 2950 for both sides, that's zero, but I'm going to write it on the credit side because it's a liability account. My bank loan, credit side for liability accounts. That means I'm going to total it up on the right. It's 6300 minus 2400 or 3900 as its final value for this account. The mortgage, both entries are on the credit side. That's cool. I'll just total them up. 7000 plus 5000 is 12000. Could have done it in my head. I like to do the formula just to avoid any errors. You can decide how you document that a little bit on your own. Finally, equity. There's a few entries here. Let's be careful about it. This is equal to my credit 
one, my credit two, my credit three, all added together minus my debit, 27,050. We'll notice if we zoom out a tiny bit here that each of these liability equity accounts are holding balances on the right hand side or the credit side, as should be the case in most circumstances. If you see a liability or equity account holding a balance on the left or debit side, it's an exceptional balance or an error, depending on the question. So something to keep in mind. So now we have totaled up the debits and credits for all our accounts. The last step is to create our trial balance. I have a template built for you here that we can just insert values. But our main goal here is to see if our total debits and credits balance out. You'll notice I already have a formula built for you that checks the totals of each column. So it should update as we go. But we're looking for these final values to be equal. If they're not, we made an error. We have to go back and find it. If they're equal, phew, we've done it correctly. So thank you to whoever in the room pointed out my little typo. Otherwise, we would have had an error here. But hopefully, we're all good. Let's quickly fill this in. My accounts in order. Cash. Accounts receivable, David L. Accounts receivable, Kathy Z. Supplies. Inventory. Office. I got those account names from my ledger, but I also could have looked back at my balance sheet and just pulled those names from here. Either is cool. They both represent the accounts in an organized manner. Lots of places we have to reference. Now I'll represent my liabilities and equities. Credit card debt, bank loan, mortgage, and finally, my owner's equity, Cindy G account. The final thing, I insert my debit and credit totals from the end points of my T accounts. My cash account held a debit balance of 77.50. I'm just going to go equals this value to make sure I don't typo anymore. My accounts receivable equals this zero dollar value. My other accounts receivable, Kathy Z, is 11.50. My supplies is equal to 22.50. My inventory is equal to 1,800, and my office is equal to 30,000. So I have 42,950 for all my debits. We'll find out if we've done things right. My credits, my credit card debt is now zero. My bank loan is 3,900. My mortgage is 12,000. And my equity is 2,750. Beautiful. Debits and credits are equal, meaning that we've made no errors. We've documented all these accounts accurately. And we've proven through our work that we have done this accounting successfully. In the whole of the document, we've accomplished a lot of stuff. We should be impressed with ourselves. We've been able to read and understand a balance sheet, transfer its information to the opening balances of a ledger and all of its T accounts. We've been able to think through a number of transactions and think about the types of accounts and debits and credits being affected by these various transactions and then add in entry updates to our ledger in an organized manner. Once we finished all of that work, we were able to find the final balance of each account highlighted in green to see where the accounts end up at the end of the financial period, and then take that information, toss it in our trial balance to ensure that at the end of the day, debits and credits balance to see that our fundamental accounting balancing is fulfilled. And with that, you now know enough to solve the hardest problems in chapter four. Thanks for your attention.